Members of the Australian Rug Makers Guild overcame vast distances to bring together rug works from around the country for the Coast to Coast exhibition. Rugs and items created using rug making techniques were on display. For the opening, members came from WA, South Australia, Victoria, Queensland and New South Wales and spent the weekend sharing their knowledge of techniques and tools. Gail Nichols and Maggie Hickey from New South Wales, studying two of Gail's works. Her inspiration for this piece was her photo of a discarded piece of rusted and twisted corrugated iron, the material used long ago for the walls and roof of the old woolshed building, which is part of the original Strathnan homestead, now an Arts Association village. This wall hanging, hooked by Gail Nichols, was also inspired by a photograph taken of leaf litter at the edge of a lake. Guild President Judith Stevens from South Australia and Janet Taylor Henry from the ACT demonstrated toothbrush rug making. As well as mats, baskets and bowls can be made using this technique. Old doona covers and sheets are a good source of material as they provide large straight pieces of colourful fabric. Bobby George from Victoria really enjoyed the company during the weekend as she is usually a solitary rug hooker. She does not belong to a rug making group and learned to hook from books and online videos. Bobby was so enthused after the weekend at Strathnan, she went home and contacted the organisers of a local stitch festival and has arranged for space to demonstrate rug hooking in next year's festival, hoping to promote enough interest to get a small group going. Bobby impressed us with her colour planning. Andrea Honey from Country Victoria is also a solitary rug hooker and has her own take on the craft. She works without the benefit of a frame and prefers a free-form style with no corners to worry about. Plus she liked to embellish her work with cutouts and the addition of buttons and stitch. Techniques were not the only thing being discussed during the weekend. Gail Nichols from New South Wales, whose large wall hangings are on exhibit, demonstrated the adjustable stand made for her large stretcher frame. This stand has many benefits. Once attached, the frame can be used tilted or flat, allowing the work area to be adjusted to various seating heights or even a standing position. The frame was made in New South Wales, and if anyone is interested in purchasing one of these stands, email rughookingaustralia at gmail.com for contact details. And also of interest was Gail's storage solution for her materials. Now that's an organised colour palette. Judy Tompkins from Queensland seen examining and discussing the functionality and design of Joe Franco's rug, created to go beneath a coffee table. The freeform design and holes accommodate the table legs, creating stability as the textural rug has an uneven surface. Dawn Hollands from Bermagui on the south coast of New South Wales showed one of the seven panels created by the Bermagui U3A rug hooking group. These panels are destined to hang in the surf life-saving clubhouse. The designs drawn by a local artist to represent scenes from around this coastal area were transferred to the backing from the full-size paintings. This was a huge undertaking as the rug makers in this group are all novices. Right now they're working out how to hang such large pieces. Large works seem to be popular with Australian rug makers. Jenny Anderson from South Australia has completed a hall runner designed by Judith Stevens. Jenny was so pleased with this rug when she saw it in place, she has started one for another hallway in her house. Going from large rugs to small, entries for the Coast to Coast Challenge were on display. The winning entry, chosen by Nancy Tingey, was by Marion Nafiadovis of South Australia. This group of small pieces, hooked by Yvonne from the Wanneroo Rug Makers Group in WA, began as placemats and finished up being hung as a collage. Hooked bags were also on exhibit. However, this one, hooked by Anne Schaefer from Victoria, using wool purchased from Tascot in Tasmania, was only there for one weekend as Anne uses it when travelling. Anne is standing in front of one of two rugs hooked by Robin Inkpen of Western Australia. The one on the right sold on the first day. Beck Anderson from Queensland has two large rugs on exhibit. Both these hooked pieces were designed by Beck and created by her with an electric tufting gun and wool yarn which she hand dyes with natural dyes. Beck is very involved with community projects. Her most recent, during an artist in residency program, was teaching 11 year old children in their last year at primary school to rug hook. Beck also gives rug making classes and makes rugs on commission. Talks and demonstrations by accomplished and well known textile artists were fascinating and much appreciated by the audience of rug hookers who were interested to hear how these women discovered their passion for their fibre art and approached creativity in their field, overcoming the problems of fitting their creative work into their daily life of family and careers. With a dynamic and humorous approach, Christine, whose qualifications are in fashion and design, told of being a sewer and coming from a background of manufacturing clothing. 
how she and her friend Bonnie Begg, an art teacher and photographer, work together their different personalities, creating a yin and yang approach to coming up with a meaning for the amazing costumes they made from things recycled. Also, how they discovered and learned techniques to create dramatic effects. Most of the audience was aware of WOW in New Zealand, the wearable art competition which has been drawing entrants from around the globe for over 20 years, but didn't know they were in the presence of someone who had placed several times in this prestigious competition and who has had garments in the museum in New Zealand and currently in a worldwide travelling exhibition. Christine has also presented a garment entered in a wearable art competition in New South Wales and spoke of other wearable art contests within Australia. Christine's Green Wow entry called Cash Cow is well placed in front of a large rug depicting a cow central in a farmyard scene, which was hooked by Helen Many from New South Wales. Lynn Johnson described her passion for knitting and how she learned to knit from family members. Lynn showed a selection of her amazing colourful rugs and wraps. To Lynn, there's a mathematical challenge in composition and design to complete these projects. She's now documenting her work in Yarn Magazine and her website, as well as participating in group exhibitions with the Canberra Spinners and Weavers and Networks Australia. Carol Duval, an accomplished local filter, gave a demonstration explaining there are many ways to felt and showing a particular technique she likes to use. A surprise to some of us, because while it involved wet felting, it was done in a controlled way, without a lot of drips and mess. Carol said she was introduced to felting at college in the early 80s, but it wasn't until 88, when she did a workshop with Joan Fisher, that she was hooked on teaching and working with felt. Nancy Tingey officially opened the exhibition. She's an accredited textile artist in the UK and Australia whose career spans over 40 years in the arts as a curator and teacher and who exhibits her works in several mediums. She officially opened the exhibition Sunday afternoon and was introduced by Maggie White, convener. Nancy told of her introduction to rag rugs as a child in Lancashire, seeing a rug created by the family of her friend whose mother was a dressmaker. They utilised scraps of material left over from her work. Nancy came from a family who, like most middle class families, felt recycling was beneath them. So she didn't see another rag rug until in her late twenties when she was a curator in Kendall. She helped hang an exhibition of historic prize animal portraits owned by wealthy farmers. Also in the exhibition were rag rugs made by poor families, depicting their treasured animals. Years later at a craft show in Milton, New South Wales, where rag rugs were on display, Nancy bought a hand-spun purple shawl, which she was wearing at the opening, from Miriam Miller, and attended one of Miriam's Friday rugging sessions. After this, on a trip back to England, Nancy made her own rag rug, working in an English group similar to Miriam's. According to Nancy, traversing the Hessian with her hook became a metaphor for crossing continents as she was using her artwork to look at issues relating to living in the two cultures. Nancy said she found making her one and only rag rug an intensely satisfying experience. The quilly brooch made by Maggie White was given to Nancy as a small token of our thanks for her support. Who knew it would match Nancy's outfit so well? Maggie White, pictured chatting with Kerry, Gail and Maggie Hickey, is to be credited for organising such an interesting weekend and bringing to us a group of talented textile artists. Thanks also goes to Judith Stevens, Guild President, and Malcolm Edward Cole for their help with setting up the exhibition.